It's summer, it's sunny, and I'm planning a barbecue for my family. Now, I've already checked plates and cups that I have by using a pictograph. I've also checked when people are free using a block graph. And today, I'm going to look at the food I'm going to buy and my budget. A budget is how much money that you have to spend on something in particular. So, it's the end of the month. I've had a look around the house, down the back of the sofa, in Richard's purse or wallet, and I have found this amount of money. That is one, two, three, four, five pounds. That's my budget. That's all I have. So when I'm looking at the food today and the prices, I need to make sure that it's either less than or exactly five pounds. Now, it's a barbecue I'm planning and it's a barbecue with the Clark family, which means that there has to be one very, very special item of food at the barbecue and that is a chalk ice. Everybody must have a chalk ice because it's a Clark family barbecue and that's just what we do. So I've had a look online at my nearest shop which is Tesco and they have eight chalk ices for one pound. Now I know what you're thinking but there's only going to be seven people at the barbecue. But you need to remember that most supermarkets they sell packets of food in even numbers. Maybe there's two, four, six, eight in a packet. So if I've got seven people coming, then I need to make sure that I'm looking for packets of eight so that everybody can have one. And there's one left over for me later when everybody's gone. Barbecues are not the most healthy food choices to have. So I'm going to make sure that I have some vegetables. And in my opinion, the best vegetable to have at a barbecue is a corn on the cob. So I found this packet of corn on the cobs as well. Chalk ices are a pound, corn on the cobs are £1.50. If I add that together, that's £2.50 I've spent already. That's half of my budget on chalk ices and corn on the cobs. So the last thing I need to decide is whether we're going to have burgers, veggie burgers or sausages. Burgers, sausages and veggie burgers need a roll. There's only six people in my family who actually eat bread. There's some people who can't eat bread. So I only need a packet of six. So I tried, um, I checked how much a packet of six burger rolls would cost and a packet of six hot dog rolls would cost. And actually, they're the same price. So that doesn't help me with my decision. What will help me with my decision is looking at and comparing how much a burger costs, how much veggie burgers cost, and how much sausages cost. And to make that comparison, I'm going to make a bar graph. So for my bar graph, I have something to write on, something to write with, and a ruler. It would be easier if I had squared paper. If you have squared paper or a squared jotter, great, use that. If you don't have a ruler, you can always fold a piece of paper in half and use that to make sure that your lines are straight. Now, the bar graph starts pretty much the same as the block graph. I need to have a title and I need to have these axes, one that is vertical and one that is horizontal. So I'm going to draw that just now. The title of my bar graph is going to be Food for the Barbecue. Now, down here at the horizontal line, this is where I'm going to write the type of food I'm going to choose from for my barbecue. Now, up here, this is going to be the cost of the items. And it's really important that I say how I'm recording the cost of the items. So am I rec recording it in beans? Am I recording it in bananas? Or am I recording it in pounds? The reason I'm using a bar graph today and not a block graph is all to do with these numbers down the side. In the block graph, each of these numbers meant one and all of the boxes meant one. In my bar graph, I'm going to have to split up the pounds into 10 pences and make more of a scale. I'll show you how I do so, it. So, I need to use my ruler. And down here is where it's going to start. So that's going to be zero. 
Then I need to go up in tens all the way up to see as far as I can get. So this is going to be 10 pence, 20 pence, 30 pence, 40 pence. And this is going to be one pound. Then I'm going to keep going. One pound ten, one pound twenty, three pounds. So the reason I'm using a scale like this is because when we look at the prices, they won't always just be one pound. It might be one pound fifty, or one pound twenty, or even sixty pence. So when I'm marking this up here, these little lines here help me to make sure that it's totally accurate. Let's look at how much burgers cost on the website. So the burgers cost £2.50. So I've got £2 here and I need to go up to £2.50. So I'm just going to count in tens. £2.10, £2.20, £2.30, £2.40, £2.50. Right here. Then I'm going to draw my bar. There are burgers up to £2.50. And if you want to be really fancy, you can colour it in. Now we're going to look for veggie burgers. Veggie burgers are £1.75. So that means I can go £1 and then we're going to count up in tens. So £1.10, £1.20, £1.30, £1.40, £1.50, £1.60, £1.70. Now it says £1.75. So I know that five is going to be right halfway between these two lines. If these two lines mean ten and five is half of ten, then I'll need to make sure that my dot is halfway between these lines. So I'm going to put my ruler halfway between and I'm going to draw my bar here. Now let's look for sausages. Sausages are £1.70. So again, I can start at a pound and add up tens, or I can start at two pounds and take away because two pounds is the same as 200. So 200 going back to £1.70 or 170 is just taking away 30. So I can go two pounds, £1.90, £1.80, £1.70. There are three really important things to remember when making a bar graph. I wonder if you can guess what they are. Number one is you need to label it. It's really important for the person who's looking at your graph that they know what it's about, especially your scale down the side. Now today, we didn't just use numbers like one, two, three, four. We also used little lines to cut off where our 10 pences were. So it's really important that I tell people that the scale is in pounds and it's to do with money. If that wasn't there, somebody might think it was the amount of burgers or sausages, or they might have just completely misunderstood what the graph was about. So it's really important that you label your graph. The second important thing is that you keep it neat. You saw me today using a ruler, I tried to make it neater than I made the block graph. And that's also really important so that your bar graph is accurate, that it shows exactly how much money each of those um, items of food cost, so that when somebody looks at it, that they know that the information is accurate and true. The third thing you need to do with your bar graph is you need to use the information. Now, let's have a look at my bar graph. Remember, the reason I made this bar graph is so that I could compare the costs easily of different items of food for my barbecue. I'm already spending some money on chalk ices, I'm already spending money on corn on the cob, and I know that our rolls, whichever we get, burgers or sausage rolls, are gonna cost 69 pence. So adding that all together, that comes to three pounds and 19 pence. So that means that I don't have as much money as I thought I did for the rest of the food. Now, burgers here are the most expensive. 
So I can see that really clearly because the bar is the highest. So I'm going to not buy burgers because they're too expensive. They're more expensive than the other two. With veggie burgers and sausages, they're really, really close. It's actually going to make me use the scale so that I can see exactly how much each of those costs. So I need to look up the side and check very carefully which one is more expensive. And it turns out veggie burgers are more expensive. So I'm going to be ordering sausages for my barbecue. Bar graphs are really useful for recording information and they're also really useful for comparing information, especially when you're using a sort of scale. In this example, I've been using money, but when you make a bar graph, maybe you can use a different sort of scales. There are scales in things like measurements. Maybe you want to measure how long lots of different things are in the house and compare them using a bar graph. Now that I've decided what food I'm going to have at my barbecue, the next thing to decide is which day the weather is best, Friday or Saturday. I'm going to be using a Carol diagram to do that next.